Hey everybody, it's Johnny Cotru, and in this video I'm going to be rating and reviewing the latest album from K-pop group SHINee titled Atlantis. The album is a repackage of their 2021 comeback album Don't Call Me, which I enjoyed quite a bit earlier this year. In fact, it might even be my favourite SHINee release so far. So just to quickly give you some background on how I got into SHINee and K-pop in general. Around 2015, I came across the K-pop group FX and specifically their album Pink Tape, and found that there was a lot more creativity going on in the world of K-pop than I might have previously expected. I became a pretty big fan of FX and started looking for other K-pop groups that seemed to be similarly creative and exciting. I especially got into more groups under the label of SM, especially Red Velvet, who continue to put out really creative stuff to this day. In fact, recently I did a reaction and review to the first solo album from Joy from Red Velvet and you can check that out with the link somewhere up there. So another group that I got into at the same time was Shiny. Back then I was told they were kind of like the boy band version of FX, which I guess was a good way to sell them to me. I really enjoyed certain singles that Shiny had put out, especially View and Married to the Music. And since then I've always tried to keep an ear out for whatever Shiny is putting out. Although Don't Call Me that came out earlier this year was perhaps the first Shiny album that I really enjoyed all the way through. Just a couple years ago, Shiny very sadly lost perhaps their most creative member, Jeonghyun. A very good album named Poet Artist was put out with his solo compositions, and I definitely recommend that album if you're interested. Shortly after that, Shiny put out a series of EPs called The Story of Light which I did listen to. I listened to all of those EPs and although they had some decent tracks, I did feel they were pretty inconsistent. So I was very pleased to find that their first full length album as a four piece turned out to be one of their most creative yet and have some of their most exciting bangers in quite a long time. I did feel that Don't Call Me maybe petered out slightly towards the end with a couple of weaker tracks. But overall, I ended up giving the album a solid 3.0. I did like it. And now we have the repackage of the album titled Atlantis. It's had a new title track added, Atlantis, a couple of bonus tracks, and the track list of the whole album has been reconfigured. I already watched the music video of Atlantis, which I enjoyed quite a bit. And it should be quite fun to see how the new songs fit in with the older songs and see how the new track list order works for the album. So in this video, I'm going to listen to the full repackage album. I'm going to give a rating to every song and give a new overall rating for the repackage album. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and leave a comment down below to let me know what you think of the album and the new repackage. So time to listen to the album. The first track is the new title track, Atlantis. <laughs> Okay, so that's Atlantis, the new title track, and it's a good track. I do particularly like it when Shiny is channeling that kind of bad era Michael Jackson style, and that's very much what they're doing here, so I do appreciate that. Maybe I do feel the melodies in this particular song could be a bit stronger, but still, it's an enjoyable track and a good opener, a good new opener. I will give Atlantis a 3.5. The next song, track two, is actually my favorite from the original album. It's called Code. Don't speak about it, be about it. Not on Dabby Gaka, what you get about it. That's a great track. That's one of my most favorite shiny songs I've heard. I'm really a sucker for that kind of futuristic sound. Even if it's kind of faux futuristic, it doesn't matter. It just works for me. Like, sounds like uh, people dancing in a club in a hundred years time. I I'm into that sound. I give Code a 4.0. Track three is the original title track, Don't Call Me. I promise to tell the truth. Give us some love. Wow, so there you go, that's Don't Call Me. And I, I have quite a bit to say about this one. It's, to be honest, when I first heard the song, I wasn't too sure about it. 
I, w- I really didn't know how to feel about it. It, it. It's quite an unusual song. And generally, that's what I look for in K-pop, that kind of creativity, taking unexpected turns while still remaining in the pop format. But when I first heard this song, it just seemed to not work. It just felt like kind of lopsided with this weird chromatic hook, the don't call me, don't call. But it just took a few listens and I started to come around to it. I, I found that the chorus, the actual chorus, is, is not super catchy at first. It wasn't for me. But after a couple of listens, I started to realize it was getting stuck in my head. I was singing along. And in fact, the chromatic hook that I spoke about, it just supports the chorus pretty well. You know, the whole song isn't supposed to hang on that chromatic hook. So yeah, it works really well in that way. And then towards the end, you have that really unexpected Latin jazz piano part, which is well, brilliant. I love it. So yeah, this song has grown on me a lot. It's really uh, gone from being kind of a meh song to something that I think is another great track. So yeah, I'm actually going to give this one a 4.0 as well. Great song. The next song, track four, is the first bonus track for the repackage and it's called Area. All right, so that was Area. And there's a lot I like about this song, but I feel it doesn't fully satisfy me in the end. I like the melancholy in the chords and the melody. The mood of the song is a big contrast to the songs around it, and I think that's a good thing. It works well. It fits well in the track list between the more upbeat tracks, that's for sure. Uh, the deep sliding bass underneath everything sounds really good and stops it from being too sappy. I would just say the melody is just okay though. It, it doesn't seem to have a very strong hook. Overall a decent song. I'm, I'm gonna give it a 3.0. The next song is another of my favorites from the original album. It's called Heart Attack. <laughs> All right, Heart Attack. That's a great song. It's got uh, it's got that UK sound that I'm very familiar with, being from near London. I wouldn't be surprised if it's from the same writers and producers that did songs like FX's Four Walls and Chinese Own View. And it also has that uh, really upbeat dance energy that they had with Married to the Music, one of my favorite shiny songs. So yeah, it's got all the ingredients for a shiny song I love. In this one, I love the jazzy chords. I love the deep house production. The melody in the chorus is brilliant. It's a great song. I give Heart Attack a 4.0. The next song, track six, is one of the first ones we heard from Don't Call Me originally. It's Marry You. All right. So marry you. When I first heard this song, I was not too into it at all. I was I was quite quickly put off by the extremely simplistic English lyrics in the chorus. But it didn't take long for me to come around to this one. I I just had to focus in on the tasteful but strong production and the very memorable and effective melodies. It's actually a great song. And I give it a 3.5. So the next song is Days and Years. Okay, so Days and Years, it has a more modern radio pop sound, more typical of uh, what you find in the Western charts. And you know, it doesn't entirely work for me. It's not a style I generally enjoy too much. The melodies elsewhere are nice. They're quite nice, but maybe a bit corny. The production overall is good. I like the sound of it. It gives the song a decent energy, but the hook is just kind of annoying, unfortunately for me. It ends up evening out a 2.5 for me. So the rest of the album seems to be in the same order as it was on the original Don't Call Me, but I'm going to listen through to it and give each song its rating. Uh, the next track is track eight on this album and it's called I Really Want You. All right, I like this one. It's got that married to the music sound again, which I like a lot. Very upbeat and dancey. The chorus is brilliant. 
Uh, really, really catchy, rhythmically cool. And I like the way the members are taking turns to sing the hook. Some of the production decisions are a little questionable. Some of the brass is a bit lame. <laughs> but overall, the song is just good fun. It's a good song. I give it a 3.5. The next song, track nine, is called Kiss Kiss. Okay, so my memory of that song was that I don't like it too much because of the kissing sounds in it, which just make me roll my eyes, I guess. But to be honest, I did end up enjoying the song. I, I think that it has nice production. The bass guitar in the verse sounds great. The Nile Rodgers style rhythm guitar in the chorus is a nice touch. Uh, the melodies, I would say, are mostly just okay. The kiss kiss, I don't like it. But it's followed by these large swelling harmonies by all the band members. And that sounds great. It sounds really great. And in the end, I end up thinking, I like more about the song than I don't. So I give it a 3.0. The next song is called Attention, track 10. <laughs> Okay, I don't like the whistle. <laughs> it's a big problem for me. I don't like the whistle. It's a big no-no for me. It makes it sound like a bank advert, I think. But that being said, I think that's the only thing about the song I don't really like. Uh, the production sounds good. The vocals sound great. The melody is pretty good. Nothing too special, though. It's not a bad song in the end. I give it a 2.5. The next song is Body Rhythm. Won't you follow my body rhythm? Come up on my body rhythm. Oh, you follow my body rhythm. Ooh. Okay, so body rhythm. I know my sister in law, Macho, loves this song, so shout out to Macho. But like I told her a while back, the song doesn't do it for me. <laughs> the cod reggae sound, it makes me think of Informa by Snow which I know has had a pretty big reggaeton remix here in Latin America recently. So I guess that sound is having a comeback at the moment and they're probably clever to cash in on it, but I just can't get into it. The melody of this song is okay, uh, but the rhythmic reggae stuff, the body body stuff, it just makes me cringe. I can't stand that. In the end, I give the song a 2.0. That just leaves us with the last song. It's called Kind. Okay, so that's the last song. And I think it's a bit of a K-pop tradition to end the full-length album on a ballad. I've heard it done quite a few times. And, you know, this one was okay. Usually I don't like them. I usually find the sappy ballads to be, you know, just boring, basically. But this one, it has a pretty good melody. It's memorable. And you know, like the rest of the album, they managed to get some cool production in there. So I like it for that, but ultimately I still find it kind of dull. I give it a 2.0. It seems like they left some of the weaker songs towards the end of the album, which I thought was the case on the original too. You know, they've mixed up the track list on this repackage, but they didn't mix up the ending too much. And, you know, to me, it just seems like they just thought, well, they're the weaker ones towards the end, so we'll leave them there. And I don't know if that was the best decision, although it does make for a very strong first half to two thirds of the album. Code and Heart Attack remain two of my favorite shiny songs I've heard yet. I think they're fantastic. And even Don't Call Me has sort of grown to that level. It's grown on me so much that I also think that one is one of the best songs they've done as well. The new songs for the repackage are mostly good. Uh, Atlantis especially is great. Um, Area is pretty good and Days and Years is just okay. But yeah, since some of the original songs have grown on me quite a lot, while others, especially those ones towards the end, still don't do too much for me, it ends up balancing out. And I feel more or less the same about the repackage as I did about the original album. But I suppose this one just feels more complete, you know, especially because this is 
it just it's rounded the length of the album out to a better length for a full album but in the end yeah i think the album still gets a 3.0 from me a good album but maybe could have been even stronger and i'll definitely still look forward to seeing whatever shiny do next so please leave a comment down below to let me know what you think of my thoughts on this album. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider supporting me with the link in the description to buy me a coffee. Any support you can give me will really be appreciated and help me continue making these videos. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take it easy.